Hi, I'm Carly Bell, and welcome to my craft room. Today, I wanted to show you how I hoop and embroider a baby onesie. So, um, I have a friend that had a baby a few months ago, and I'm running a little bit late with sending them their baby presents. So, I have a six month onesie, and this is just the Carter's brand that you can get from either Walmart or Target. So it's a little bit on the thin side. So I'm going to show you how I um, hoop it and stabilize it. It's very similar to how I've done in one of my past videos with um, toddler shirts. Um, just hooping's a little bit more complicated uh, because of all the extra fabric that you need to get out of the way. But I'll show you that in a second. So I have my six month onesie. And today I'll be using the 4x4 hoop, which came uh, with, no, actually it didn't come with it. So I have a um, Brother PE770, or the PE800 is the newer version of that machine. And it actually only came with the 5x7 hoop here. And then I purchased an extra set of hoops um, on Amazon, which I'll link down below, which came with the 4x4 um, a smaller, this little guy here, I think it's like two and a half um, by two inch oval, um, an extra five by seven, and then a five by 12 repositionable hoop, um, which I plan on making a video soon showing you how to use that one. So anyway, we're using a four by four hoop today. And let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do before hooping is figure out our placement for the onesie. Uh, onesies are a little bit difficult. They're, they're more difficult than the toddler size shirts that I've showed you before, but I pretty much use the same ba basic steps. So first, with any garment, I like to press it with an iron. So next, I will take the grid that came with the hoop and figure out the center of the onesie. So I just use a ruler and it's roughly eight inches. So four inches is the mark for the center. And usually I'll just do the top of this being right underneath the collar. So that looks good. And then I mark it with my um, disappearing ink uh, marker, fabric marker. Just make sure it's nice and straight. And then I make my dots. And then I make some crosshairs. Once you have your placement marks made, um, turn the onesie inside out. And you can press it with the iron again if you want to. I can kind of see my placement marks through there and that's where I'm going to put my poly mesh stabilizer and I just cut a piece big enough to cover the embroidery field and I'm going to iron that into place. And then I have a piece of fusible tear away, and I'm just gonna iron that right on top. Since this onesie is a bit on the thin side as far as the material goes, and I'm planning to do a sketch um, design 
and a little bit of a fill design. I want to make sure that this is really stable. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of tearaway stabilizer. And I'm just going to iron it right on top of the other one. three layers of stabilizer. I know that sounds like a lot. Um, some people like it. Another option would be uh, to use cutaway um, with this to give it, that would be more stable, but because it's so thin and it's white, when you're done stitching the design and you would you know, cut the stabilizer around the design on the back, you will definitely still see it. Uh, through the shirt. So that's why I choose poly mesh and to layer um, tear away on top um, so that you don't see the stabilizer poking out around the design. It's just my, my preference. But if you do have issues with a lot of puckering or um, the design not stitching out well, then cutaway might have to be the stabilizer that you use. But for now. Okay, so we turned it back we got our stabilizer, our placement marks, everything's there. Now I'm going to take the outer part of the hoop and slide it in inside the shirt. I'm kind of guessing where it's going to fall just by feeling. Try to get it in there. Okay, and now I take the top part of the hoop and the grid that fits in it. Excuse my hoop, it's really dirty from spraying adhesive on it. I need to clean it. <laughs> um, okay, so you're just kind of feeling and pressing the upper part of the hoop. And as I'm doing that, I'm looking at my dots and, try, and my grid, my crosshairs, and trying to line it up with where my placement marks on my shirt are. And before you start, you should make sure that this is loosened so that you can push the hoop in. There's a little screw there. And you just kind of move the shirt around and the hoop until you get it lined up about where you want it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you can get without driving yourself crazy. And see, so the collar is going to give me a little bit of trouble here because that's some extra bulk trying to go through there, but we can fix it after. So once you get it in, just press it in place. Sorry. Okay. So now I'm just going to push it all in place. And I'm going to tighten up this screw here. Okay, so now we can take the grid off and we have the hooped onesie. We got a little bit here from the collar and you can just gently pull it from the top. That area is not in the sewing field so it shouldn't be a problem, but let me just pull it up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is, I do this with all my designs is I put a little bit water soluble topper just to keep the threads from sinking in and helps it to stitch out nicer. And I just secure the topper with some pins. And make sure you put the pins outside of the embroidery field so that your needle doesn't hit them on accident. Okay, so we have it hooped, we have all our stabilizers and our topper. Now we're going to fix it up to where most of the material will be out of the way when we're sewing. So my trick for keeping the fabric out the sewing field. So you turn it inside out and essentially this is how you load it on the machine. You don't want nothing um, underneath and your needle's gonna come in this way and stitch. But it's really hard to keep all of this out of the way. So what I do 
is take it, start at the bottom and roll. And now you can kind of fold these sleeves in and keep rolling. Like this. And then I use masking tape. And once I have that roll and now I'm pretty much at the top of the shirt, I will place the masking tape and then roll it around the back of the hoop. And I don't think this will be in the sewing field here so that you can see the masking tape is just touching here, so it should be fine. So, yeah. So, that's one side. And then you roll the other. Place some masking tape and get that all stuck. Okay, so get it way in there where it's almost touching the top of the thing. Make sure you don't roll any uh, of the shirt underneath with it and then just get it out of the way. And then here's the bottom. You could take this and roll it. And you just roll this on the back. And I'll probably tear it right here so it doesn't. sewing field. So that is my trick for hooping a onesie and keeping all the material out of the way. Just I do the same thing for a toddler shirt and um, that's it. So now we can go to the machine and load the design on. So we are now at the embroidery machine and I have everything ready to go. I have my um, hoop with my onesie I have all my threads and I put them in the order um, that I plan to use them and I have uh, In Brilliance Essentials pulled up on my laptop with the design that I'm going to do and um, I'm from New Orleans and Café du Mont is a really popular staple here and I have some friends that used to live here in New Orleans with us but then they moved to St. Louis so I wanted to make them a onesie with a little bit of New Orleans on it for them. So. It's a sketch design. I got it, I believe, from Joy Kate Designs, and I'll put the link in the description below where you can find this design. So first thing I'm going to do is turn the machine on, and it's going to ask me to touch the screen, and it will move the embroidery carriage. And now I'm going to go ahead and load the um, hoop onto the machine. So because we have all of this going on and it's real thick and you're not going to be able to slide that under, I'm going to go from the back and this bottom corner is about the lowest point. And you just gently work your way in there. And then you, there are two um, open areas here in the bracket and then two circles here that fit and you just pull this back and then it slides right on and so now we can go ahead and load the design so it's on my USB stick so I will press this and it's the first design I have and then I will select up so now it's ready to go other than that I need to thread the machine so my first color is this gray for the outline and I'm just gonna use my, I like to use a thread stand instead of the thread um, holder that comes on the machine. It's just my personal preference. So slide that through and then I will thread the machine as the instructions are on it to go around, down, around, down this bar number six up through seven and that and then it loops it through the back and you just pull it through and 
Okay. So um, everything's loaded. So now we'll just lower the presser foot and start stitching. Whenever it's done with a particular step of color, I um, raise the presser foot. I cut the thread right here. And then I pull it through um, the bottom of the needle so that the thread is passing in the same direction as you would to thread it. Um, I've been told that it's important not to pull the thread out from this direction and go the opposite of the threading that it can mess up. So um, that's my little tip when changing the thread color. You will waste a little bit of thread um, by cutting here and, and pulling out the bottom. Also, I'm not sure if you can see, but there are some jump stitches in between the, the plate and the coffee cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those now. Sometimes it's better to cut them in between colors and save you a little bit of a headache when you're done cutting and having all those different colored threads jumped all over the place. Uh, I have been looking at the, I guess what would be the next model up from my machine. So this is the PE770 or PE800 is the newer model of the same machine. But the next one up would be the NQ1600E. It's like, has several upgrades up from this machine, including it can sew a bigger field. This one is, uh, the highest it can go is five by seven. The NQ1600E can go up to six by 10. Um, and my favorite part about it is it cuts the jump stitches for you so that every time it has to go from one place to another and instead of bringing the thread along with it, it will tie off and cut and then move the needle and start stitching in the new area. Um, I think another thing is, is that it sews faster. So thinking about upgrading to that one, so we'll see. But now we'll, I've changed the thread color, we'll lower the presser foot and go on to the next color. So if you notice right here, because I have all this bulk of this rolled up shirt, when I'm going to thread the needle, this is hitting it. So just make sure you pay attention to things like that. You could pull it out of the way and then it shouldn't have any trouble threading the needle. Okay, so we are all done and we are finished sewing so we can hit OK and raise the presser foot and press this button here to lift the hoop up and I'm going to go the same direction in that bottom corner and you can see our cute Cafe du Mall design. Okay, now that we are done with stitching the design, um, some of the things that I am going to do is remove the uh, tape. And then you can unroll and unscrew the bottom of the hoop and take it apart. And take the hoop out. And you can turn the design right side out and let's clean it up. So we could take the pins out that was holding the water soluble topper. And I see one jump stitch here that I didn't get, so I'm gonna cut that before I take off the topper. I don't see any other jump stitches. So now I'm just gonna pull the topper just like I would 
tear away. And some of it is not going to come off because this is a, a sketch design, so there's going to be lots of uh, topper in all of these areas. Oh, I missed another jump stitch. Um, that we can just spray some water on to get it out. And you can also cut it away too, just like you would if you were putting away applique fabric. But I think this onesie, we're gonna have to spray it a lot to get all the topper off. Uh, so I keep a little spray bottle with water on my craft desk just for this reason. And just let it sit on there for a minute and it will dissolve and you can take a towel and it just kind of wipes off. And also when you wash the onesie for the first time, it will come off as well. I see more jump stitches. So now that we've done that, I am going to take a tied pin and see even though I sprayed water, not all of these placement marks went away. I find the tie pin really gets them out. So any leftover placement marks, you can just hit with that. Put something on there. Okay. So now we'll turn it inside out and fix up the back. So this was they had some really dense stitching on the beignets with the um, the powdered sugar and it even has like a texture to it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I like how the, ah, focus, the design came out, but it's like textured powdered sugar on the beignets. So it's really dense, so I'm glad I put an extra layer of stabilizer. Now as far as all of these threads go. I usually don't cut very much back here except for instance like this green thread. If this is out and on the side you're gonna see it through the the white and then maybe a couple of these brown threads. But you don't want to cut too much because then you're gonna compromise your your stitches and they might be they might can come undone um, on the front. So we have two layers of, of tear away and then the poly mesh there. So first I'm going to do the first layer of tear away and just tear it away. You don't need to get in between everything, but just whatever is easiest to pull out. Okay, so that's the first layer. Here's the second layer. So the poly mesh is staying on the shirt. That's your cutaway. And with sketch designs, it's a little bit harder to, to pull these things away. So you just gotta give it a little extra effort. It's fine. That will get just a little bit in here. So now we have that. I don't see any dark colored threads going out that you might be able to see through the shirt. And next is we don't want all of these threads rubbing against the baby's skin. So we will put a fusible over the back cover up on it. So I will just cut a piece a little bit bigger than the design. It doesn't cut 
easy. Okay, so here's the fusible over the back cover up and we will just iron that on. All right, and that's it. Turn it right side up. And we can press the front to put a piece of parchment paper on top to protect it. And that is our finished onesie. So our baby onesie is now complete. And I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it was helpful and showed you that baby onesies are a little bit scary to do, but um, if you figure out the best combination of stabilizers for your particular uh, onesie and project, which I tend to, to stick to my poly mesh and tear away combinations, um, and then using a way to keep all of that fabric out the way. And I really like masking tape. I, I find it's the best solution uh, for me to keep things out the way and not constantly um, putting my hands in the machine or sticking you know pencils or chopsticks in the machine to try and keep the material out the way. You do still need to babysit it though because there are times where the needle can move certain ways and the, all that bulk of material you have going around the outer part of the hoop can get in the way of things. So still pay attention to it, don't just because the field is, is is open and nothing's in the way doesn't mean that something could still go wrong because it can. <laughs> um, so uh, if you like today's video please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe down below for more tutorials and tips on machine embroidery and other crafts. Um, for more information on other things I do in my craft room please visit my website carlybell.com and also lastly um, if you are wanting to have a place to ask questions or, or um, show off some of the latest projects that you've done or ask for other um, tips, I started a Facebook group that I will link um, in the description box down below for um, embroidery um, help and discussion and also other crafts like vinyl and sewing. So. If you're interested in that, please come join us. Uh, I try to post tips and tutorials um, there on a weekly basis, um, as well as you know things that I post here on YouTube. So I hope everyone is having a good day and uh, come back and join me again on my next video for other things going on in my craft room. Thanks. Bye.